How do we know that the 500, if they really existed, did not suffer a mass hallucination? Finally, the origin of the Christian faith, he says, maybe they came up with this idea because Jesus predicted his resurrection. But you see, the skeptic can't argue that way because the skeptical scholar doesn't think Jesus predicted his resurrection. They think those predictions were written back in after the fact. If you accept that Jesus did predict his resurrection, then you've got to also accept the historicity of the empty tomb narratives, the appearances, and so forth, because those narratives are better attested historically than the fact that Jesus predicted his resurrection. Do you see the point? If you accept the predictions, then a fortiori, you've got to accept the empty tomb and the appearances. And thus, I think we have good reason for believing that Jesus rose from the dead and was who he claimed to be. Now, as for the experiences, the appearances of Jesus, Dr. Craig said that I deny these. I do not. I do not deny that the disciples had an experience which they interpreted, which they took as being an appearance of Jesus. I think they probably did. Well, how do we account for that? How, how can we say that they could possibly have had such an, an experience? Well, once again, he very far too quickly and dismissively uh, disregards the uh, explanation of hallucinations. I think that this is really the central issue between us because you do admit these early disciples had some kind of dramatic transformative experience that led them to believe now that their master was alive again, that he was not dead, that he mm -hmm. was risen from the dead. And that's a, I'm sure you'd admit again too, this is an extraordinary belief that's very un-Jewish. It, it's, it's very odd, and, and so we want to know, one of the points that I'm making is we want to know what's the origin of these men coming up with this belief, which they believe so strongly and so sincerely that they were willing to go to these hideous deaths for it. Why do you believe that it could not have been a hallucination? Surely you know from the things I've said and from the extant literature on the nature of hallucinations, which I assume you've investigated, uh, that hallucinations, as I've said repeatedly this evening, uh, are often experienced by people as being extremely real. Furthermore, as I said in one of my rebuttals, precisely the conditions under which we expect people to have hallucinations are those which und undoubtedly were being experienced by the disciples. Yeah. An extreme sense of alienation, an extreme sense of loss, a terrible reactive depression. Uh, it's been pointed out many times that, gosh, one-third to two, over one-half of the people who have been bereaved will have a waking hallucination of their loved ones that they have lost. Yeah, but and, then they, they don't conclude that they're risen from the dead as a result of that. Well, <laughs> you know, why not? Uh, well, but they don't. I mean... Remember, I, I, remember, I'm willing you, to... You remember, of course, of course they don't. Uh, they don't conclude that they are, they are risen. Well, I'm not sure. We'd have to check. You'd have to check and see. So once again, these extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence in no way implies a bias against the supernatural. It's well, simply, it's sim it, it's simply uh, an application of a rule which we use in our daily lives. But, but you're saying that these... When you say extraordinary, really what you're saying is no amount of evidence would co convince me of these extraordinary claims. Sure it would. If uh, tomorrow morning, immediately after breakfast, suddenly there was an earthquake, you know, and a silvery light shone in the sky and the leaves dropped from the trees, and I dashed outside and there towering over us like a hundred Everest was this giant figure with lightning playing around his Michelangeloid face, and he pointed down and saying, be assured, Keith M. Parsons, that I do in fact exist and I'm sick of your logic chopping. Uh, Dr. Craig, I would join you in the pew of the church, in the you, front pew of the church the next Sunday. Uh, you, uh, so, uh, you know. Be going to the question and answer period. We're going to go to the question and answer period, so we'll be going you, to the microphone you, as we don't wind think, this down. You don't think that you would have said, boy, I was having a hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> 